Good morning. The Senate Finance Committee will come to order. It's February 10th, 2022. Welcome, everyone. We have a large agenda, but first we'd like to start with uh, Senator Housley's bill, Senate File 2848. <clears throat> and the authors are Senator Housley, Senator Limmer, Senator Duckworth, Senator Coleman, and Senator Pratt. So welcome to the committee. Thank you, Madam Senator Chair. Senator Housley. Thank you very much, um, and thank you for hearing this bill. Uh, I'm here today to talk about my bill, excuse me, <clears throat> um, to require the Department of Public Safety to launch a public service campaign to build up the entire field of law enforcement. Our law enforcement officers have given so mm. much to our communities. They've consistently been on the front lines uh, of every crisis facing our state. Uh, these police officers get up in the morning and go to work knowing that this could be the day that a call goes wrong, a day that they could be injured in the line of duty um, or even worse. What this bill does is it, it appropriates money for a marketing campaign. Our, the morale of our police officers right now is, is uh, so, so very low and there are so many police officers that are retiring early uh, and they can't fill the void of these police officers that um, are retiring. So um, it appropriates $1 million from the Department of Public Safety and uh, it would go through the Peace Officers and Standards, the Post Board, Police Officers and Standards and Training Board to implement a marketing and advertising campaign to publicly promote the importance of peace officers for the safety of the state of Minnesota. And that's the gist of the bill. Um, Madam Chair, I think there might be an amendment. Yes, thank you, um, Senator Housley. And for the record, we do have a quorum. There is the A2 amendment, members, that has been posted. And um, you have that before you, Senator Housley. And before we have Senator Ingebrigtsen move it, would you like to explain the amendment, please? Oh, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we went through the Judiciary Committee the other day, and after the bill was heard, um, there were suggestions that there should be some sort of reporting uh, uh, process, um, so there's some accountability for this. So that's what the A2 amendment does. Um, the commissioners shall report to the chairs and ranking minority members of the committees um, having jurisdiction over the criminal justice policy and funding on campaign required by this section. So there will be some oversight and some reporting after. Thank you, Senator Housley. Madam Chair, I move S the A2. Senator uh, Ingebrigtsen moves the A2 amendment, and Senator Ingebrigtsen, you have a oral amendment to that also? Uh, the A2 amendment staff uh, has recommended that a technical change within the amendment that I would like to incorporate. Uh, Mr. Nauman would be able to talk us through that technical change. Thank you, Senator Ingerson. Mr. Nauman. Madam Chair, I think on line nine it might be advisable to remove the word money and insert appropriation in this section, just to be clear, it's, uh, I think it's a little bit easier to read that way. And we're talking about the reporting provision would apply to the appropriation in this section. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nelman, any questions to that technical change? Madam Chair, I'd incorporate that. So Senator Ingerbitson moves to incorporate that technical change. Any questions to the A2 amendment? Okay. Audio on, are you on please? All those in favor of the A2 amendment, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay? Amendment is adopted. Thank you, Senator Housley. Any questions to the amended bill? Madam. Uh, Senator Marty. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, I have an A4 amendment. The A4 amendment. We'll let Mr. Bodern post that before we um, start talking, Senator Marty. Explain the bill and distribute it, yes. Members, we are going to take a brief recess uh, until it gets posted, and we have a chance to take a look at it. With that, we are in and, recess. And Madam Chair, I also have an amendment just so that we know too that should be uh, getting uh, 
finished up or completed. Absolutely. Thank you, Senator Thank you. Champion. Yeah. We may take another recess. With that, we are in recess. <laughs>
will come to order. Sorry, Senate Finance Committee will come to order. Um, Senator Ingebrigtsen, we have the A4 amendment before us. Madam Chair, I would like to uh, amend the amendment, if I could. Madam Chair, I would like to uh, on line 1.4 uh, change the $2 million to $1 million. I think that's about as clear as I can be. Uh, Senator Ingebrigtsen, and this was heard in judiciary, uh, is that correct, yesterday? That's correct. At a million dollars, and I a believe. a million dollars was on there, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe it was Senator um, Jasinski's bill, and it was laid over for possible inclusion at a million dollars. Senator Marty comments to this yeah, Madam amendment. Chair, Chair um, Senator Ingebrigtsen, I, I think that in terms of that, that Pathways program has been very helpful, very valuable. This is an amendment that would take the money from this bill and money that uh, I think Judiciary Committee was willing to put into the Pathways program and say we should spend both the money, the, all that money, $2 million, to help recruit people of color, people who are underrepresented in police departments. Um, I have been, there's an article in the Chiefs of Police magazine about how good and successful the program is. I think what we desperately need right now is more understanding law enforcement that represents more of the communities they they work for and i think that this is a very good program i would oppose the amendment i just think that we can afford the two million dollars and i think it makes a lot more sense than what we're doing here in a non-targeted media campaign thank you senator marty senator housley um madam chair members uh, i was in the judiciary committee yesterday too and and this was senator jasinski's bill um to make it a million dollars and it was vetted through the Judiciary Committee, so I'm, I would accept the million dollars as a friendly amendment. Madam Chair, it's, it's not your amendment. No. Um, Senator Marty, um, this is... I, I would not take it as a friendly amendment, Madam Chair. I like the amendment the way it is and I'd like it to stay that way and um, um, I'll ask for a roll call on the vote. Um, Madam Chair. So, members, uh, my apologies, but just uh, realize this as delete your section one. This would supplant your bill. So let's take a good look at that again, members, so we know what we are voting on. And um, basically, instead of a, an appropriation to promoting, Peace officers in a marketing and advertising campaign, it would go to the reimbursement grants to state and local law enforcement. Uh, so, Senator Ingebrigtsen. Well, M Madam Chair and, and Senator Marty, um, I certainly understand, uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, overall want to, uh, to uh, promote for law enforcement uh, uh, policing programs intended to bring persons with non-traditional backgrounds into law enforcement. You know, that's never been Quite frankly, that's never been an issue, uh, but it is being worked on now, and I think this $1 million will help supplement what's, what's going on right now, uh, specific, specifically, I know, in the, in, the, in the metro areas, as well as some of the rural areas, uh, probably more so in the metro area, because that seems to be where the shortage, the real noticeable shortage is. But um, So I, you know, a $1 million is going to be, I believe, more than enough, and I I, uh, I'm not so sure that what they would do, quite frankly, with with the two million. So, uh, um, in talking with our law enforcement professionals, uh, they think a million dollars is very suffice. So, Madam Chair, Senator, Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, so what we're really doing here, what Senator Marty is really doing here, is deleting the appropriation to promote peace officers for a million dollars, to coordinate with the post board to implement a marketing and advertising campaign to promote the importance of peace officers for the safety of Minnesotans and recruit more into law enforcement. So what we're gonna do here is vote against 
the very bill that Senator Housley has, vote against that because that's what deleting section one does. I find that not right to do that. I don't want to be voting against uh, peace officers here uh, by doing this substitute amendment. This is a delete all amendment basically and um, I don't think that's right to do. And this is already active in judiciary and in judiciary they are already considering uh, increasing and dealing with all of these. That is very much active and very much a part of the Judiciary Committee, but the big thing is I don't want to be voting for an amendment that will take away, uh, first of all, Senator Housley's bill, uh, and then taking away a very good program here. Senator Benson. Madam Chair, if I could suggest um, Senator Inga Britson rephrase his amendment to include deleting lines 1.2 and instruct staff to renumber the sections accordingly, then we could have a million dollars for the Housley promoting peace officers and a million dollars for the pathway, pathway to policing as was discussed in judiciary. We could send a $2 million package to the floor that incorporates Senator Marty's pathway to policing idea and Senator Housley's uh, promoting peace officers. Senator Benson, would you like to make that motion? Um, actually, Madam Chair, we're on an amendment. Yes, yes we are. Madam Chair, I, I, I would, I would uh, do that. I would, I would withdraw uh, your motion. Withdraw my motion. Thank you, Senator Ingebrigtsen. Senator Benson. Um, Madam Chair, I move that we strike lines 1.2 of the A4 amendment, and on line 1.4, delete 2 million and insert 1 million, and instruct staff to make technical changes and renumber the sections accordingly. Okay, all good. Mr. Bonner, good. Madam Chair, can I, Madam Chair? Yes, Senator Murdy. Mm -hmm. Can I point out that I think the committee posted the wrong amendment on the website. I think oh, thank it's you, Senator Murdy. Yesterday. I believe it's correct now. Okay. Yep, okay. The email's correct now, and thank you for that. Senator Kent. Oh. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And uh, this was a comment I was going to make before the amendment, but I think it's still relevant. Um, you know, one of the concerns I have about the underlying bill is, um, and I say this as somebody who's done a lot of marketing and communications and public awareness campaigns, including for state agencies in another state, um, it, it, it does not. It, it, there does not seem to be a rationale for this budget. There does not seem to be um, explicit guidance. This is a million dollars in a big state trying to accomplish two things in this bill that is a, um, a public awareness campaign about peace officers and recruiting. So these are two jobs within this budget. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm not sure, and perhaps Senator Housley can provide us some clarity on that and um, some evidence uh, of, of why we believe this would be an effective campaign. You know, uh, one of the great advertisers ever said one of the most famous lines, um, I know half my advertising budget works, I just don't know which half. And uh, that was back in, the, I think, the early 20th century, and he was a Chicago department store owner and just running newspaper ads. But we're in a very, we're still in that world. You know, we don't know, and we have an obligation if we're going to do this, and I, you know, fully appreciate the need to recruit more and very qualified police officers around our state. But we still have an obligation uh, here in the Minnesota Senate to make sure that we're doing it in a way that is responsible and evidence-based um, in spending this money. So uh, that is a question I have, and then I have another thought after if, if Senator Housley has anything for that. I have so, uh, more to say. Thank you, Senator Kent. Senator Housley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we are hearing from our local communities that this is a huge need. Minnesota is down 900 police officers right now. We heard from Chief Potts yesterday in judiciary. This is their, their number one concern. And this has been done in other states, Alex, uh, Alaska, Louisiana, Indiana. Uh, and, and DPS here in Minnesota is already familiar with ad campaigns. They've done it for um, the Office of Traffic Safety on a, ver a variety of topics, seatbelt usage, impaired driving. 
So this is something they should be able to handle a campaign like this. And um, we added in the reporting, so they will come back to us with how the how the campaign is going. So this is this is you talk to your police officers in your community, and this is what they're going to tell you: we need more officers on the street. It's the only way we're going to reduce crime in Minnesota is to get more police officers out there. And so these this ad campaign will do that. Thank you, Senator Housley. And I would like to make a comment too because of my involvement in the Justice Initiative, um, the, re the Justice Reinvestment Initiative that the Governor's Council and my conversations with uh, the Mayor of Minneapolis asking him, what can we do for you? What can we do for you? And he said, have a, a campaign to attract police. We need to make this job um, honorable again, uh, professional, we need to get the word out. It has worked in other states. Um, an ad campaign. So this is in direct response to a request from the very city that is down 333 officers out of uh, their quotas, like 850 that they should have. So this is um, a very, very, very sincere and serious request and um, bill that Senator Housley has brought forward. And it's the least we can do for uh, the, the folks that are absolutely do not know what, what to do next. So with that, uh, Senator Benson, would you uh, like to? Uh, uh, Senator Rosen, if I Senator Kent, yes. I, I wasn't finished. I wanted to make sure I understood. Oh, uh, did, could you raise your hand then next time, please? Because I, no, I, I, I'm I, moving. So. Okay, I, I, I made that point. I wanted. Never mind. Anyway, okay. If I could just please finish what I was saying, because I wanted to get that clarity from her before I finished my point. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, okay, back to my train of thought. Um, the, the concern I have, and, and I appreciate what Senator Housley just described. Um, first of all, I just want to be absolutely clear, and I said this at the outset, I understand that recruiting, recruitment of qualified police officers is a serious issue in Minneapolis and elsewhere. I think it's great that the Minnesota Senate is considering doing Minneapolis recruitment work for them. Um, and that is a question I have about how this would get spent geographically, how, we, how we're going to allocate it and make sure we do it in an effective way. Um, but the concern I have is that the programs that uh, Senator Housley referred to, tra Office of Traffic Safety and um, uh, Seatbelt and things like that, those are public awareness changing the behaviors of the public. If you're going to go out and do recruiting, you need to be much more targeted in the way you do it. And um, I, you know, I'm still not hearing the reassurances that this particular proposal is the right solution to a very serious problem. And what I like about um, Senator Marty's amendment is that, and as was demonstrated through that um, Chief's Magazine article, this is a proven program that does bring in officers and train them and, and bring them into the force. So, it, it, you know, this is, a, this is a marketing question. When you cast a really broad net, you're not necessarily going to get what you need, you need to be very targeted and very effective. And my concerns is that the way the current proposal in Senator Housley's bill is structured um, will not be effective and efficient and in delivering what we can agree may be absolutely what's needed. So that is my concern, and that is why I support uh, Senator Marty's amendment as he proposed it, and I, I'm not persuaded on, the, um, on Senator Benson's amendment, amendment to the amendment at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kent. And I do want to just make clear that this is one of the tools that we are trying to create to alleviate this issue. It's not going to be the panacea that's not going to cure all for this issue. It's one of the tools in the toolbox. I want to be very clear on that. Senator Lopez Franson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I don't want to be um, beating a dead horse here, but I, I do have concerns that we are creating a new tool because I've heard from your side of the aisle how we don't want to put more money in more programs. This is a new one. Um, to be frank, we've never done this before, and you know, I, I also have this background in, in my other job, and um, without having strings attached of where this money is going to go, how it's going to be distributed, to what publications, to what modes, um, not everybody in communities of color um, look at billboards necessarily in uh, on you know 35W, but uh, if you re we really want to target Minneapolis, there is um, there's a, a host of, of ways you can do that. And in recruitment, you know, you have to go to the people, right? You have to um, have open houses and things like that. So just in marketing campaign, it just it's, it's a big, big world. And we're not defining what we um, 
are you going to do with million dollars? It seems to be a lot, and I'd rather put it in a proven strategy like Pathways to Policing, where we know that we get, we're going to get the return on our investment, and people are going to complete programs versus just throwing money in into the air. Um, I also know that we all we, there's other ways to police, right? Community policing strategies that have been proposed. Um, people who can be um, police uh, on foot to create a more uh, sense of community rather than go, going from one crisis to the other. Uh, I did talk to my chief of police, uh, well, texted just yesterday in Edina, where you all know we've had a series of carjackings in a very short time frame, and the full force of that police department is 57 officers. They're down uh, uh, four, and they're in the process of interviewing eight people. So um, maybe it's not a huge pool, but what my point is, it's very different next door border with Minneapolis. Uh, and, and having more, this particular program would not help the crime that just was committed in the last few months. So I just don't think we're doing what we need to do immediately to solve the crime and the violence happening in our communities that we all deserve to be living in peace and free of violence and be able to um, pick up kids from, from school and childcare and go to the grocery store and go to the mall without being having fear of being um, carjacked. And uh, this is also a longer term solution. Maybe it's, it, it can be considered in terms of a package, but you're leading with this. Um, and you're leading with this also in, in a time where we had a, a, a horrible incident in our community and people have a, a higher distrust and we have to be sensitive about the communities that we're trying to help. Um, and I just think it's not only um, not timely to bring this particular uh, bill up front, but it really doesn't uh, hit at the core of the issue. Uh, of the distrust we have, and, and my my father was a police officer, my father-in-law was a police officer too. Um, I know the sacrifice that they have to put their, their lives on the line. Uh, my father-in-law was involved in a, in a court shooting, uh, and I've been in those situations where we, we have to hear word. Uh, so it's not about us not trying to solve the issue and not supporting our law enforcement, is what are the tools we're giving them. And a check for a million dollars uh, to post on newspapers um, and advertising, it does not seem like the right tool at this moment. And, and that is what you're leading with and with this bill, Senator Housley. And I just think we should be um, really sensitive about the moment we're doing this and, and also um, listening to all our police officers and our law enforcement departments, because they're not all created equally. Um, so I, I just don't think this is the right um, use of our state taxpayer dollars, and I'd rather put it in, in a strategy and program that's already been effective and vetted. Thank you. Thank you, Senator lopez Frenson. Mm -hmm. Senator Murray. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I appreciate this discussion, and I think it is important to talk about this. Um, in terms of the post board, 12 staff, nobody's in marketing, nobody's in that. That's not their job. They are the regulatory agency for police officers. We're giving them a million bucks to run ads saying how wonderful police are. And, and again, I will say that if we want to help address the shortage of numbers, Senator Ingebrigtsen, you said maybe in the metro area they're having trouble with getting recruiting for um, people of color and underrepresented groups. There are a lot of places in greater Minnesota have huge pop minority populations, and they could use a lot more diversity there, and this would help everywhere. This is an important thing. It's been a successful program. We're suggesting putting $2 million into it. And the only difference you're saying is, well, let's take a million of that and give it to an agency that does is not responsible for recruiting. They're responsible for the training and licensing and regulation of the police. And putting money into that is not a wise use of money if the goal is to recruit more police officers. And again, I'm going to uh, go a little further than what Senator Frank Lopez Franzen said, and that is, I think this is the timing is highly insensitive, highly insensitive. Last week we had police using a no-knock warrant in Minneapolis that the other department had said they don't need no-knock warrant. They went in with that, an innocent person was killed. There's highly sensitive number of people in our state, huge number of people not just people of color, but across the community, people are upset at some of the things that have been happening in policing, saying we're gonna run an advertising campaign the week after that, we're gonna put a million dollars into saying, police are great. There are lots of wonderful police officers, but let's try and address the problems. And this amendment is a very simple one to say, let's put the money into ways that we can re recruit 
more police officers of color, more police officers to make it more fit into the communities they represent. I think it's a very logical program to put in there, and it makes a lot more sense than putting a million dollars into an uh, untargeted marketing campaign. I mean, Post Board doesn't have anybody in marketing. That's not their job. The bill itself doesn't make sense, so we're trying to say let's use that money in a logical way to help recruit people of color into law enforcement. Thank you, Senator Marty. Senator Pratt. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and you know, and I appreciate Senator Marty's comments. I, I, I look at this and I say, after after spending two years of progressive politicians tearing down our police, trying to defund our police, besmirching their reputations. Senator Housley's got a, a, a reasonable bill here to try to build that reputation back up. And I think it's a good try. Now I think Senator Marty makes some really good points too in that we also do want to talk about recruiting and that's why Senator Jasinski brought the bill to judiciary. As I understand it, there was no discussion about increasing it from a million to two million in judiciary, that a million would be sufficient. And I think Senator Benson's amendment is a really great compromise between the two. And I'm struggling to understand why we're having this fight. I mean, advertising and promotion works. And maybe it's not just TV and radio commercials. It could be, it could be getting into our schools. It could be doing a whole host of things. And I just find this, you know, why are we trying to not promote law enforcement as an honorable profession after the two years that we've been through? I just, I'm, I'm amazed, and, and Madam Chair, I, I, I support Senator Benson's amendment to the amendment because I think it's a, a, a way to find compromise in this, in this uh, debate. Thank you, Senator Madam Pratt. We, uh, Senator, Senator, Senator Marty, I would like to speak first, please. Sure. I would just like to say that we are giving, through Senator Housley's bill, exactly what the mayors and law enforcement wants. And like I said, it is a tool in the toolbox. There is a lot we can work together across the aisle on this very issue. We may be coming at it very differently, but Senator Pratt explained it well. We are, it's a win-win with this oral amendment from Senator Benson. Senator Marty. Madam Chair, thank you. I wanted to respond because yesterday Senator Pratt sort of, it was said that I was attacking business community because of some of the things I was saying on the unemployment Senator issues. Marty, um, Senator Marty, don't, please don't bring in another conversation okay. from another committee okay. into this, Madam, please. Madam Thank you. Chair, we'll stay on the we'll target. talk about what, this morning, he just said, a lot of, I don't know what he said, progressive politicians, right after I offered this amendment, he said a lot of them are saying they hate, they're going after the police, they're attacking our police. This was not an attack on police. This is taking none of the money away from policing, it's simply saying instead of a marketing campaign that I think is insensitive at this time and putting it into recruiting police officers of color, which is something that he says he supports as well. So I, I just, my only point I'm trying to make is please don't put words in our mouth saying that we are, we yesterday attacked this, today we're attacking police. Senator Marty, police. there is no words in his mouth about this. He, he clearly stated, and you are bringing in a conversation um, that does not belong here. So Senator Pratt, do you have any comments? Thank you, Madam Chair. I did not say that Senator Marty was attacking police with this amendment. I said that over the last two years, politicians have been attacking police and besmirching their reputation. And I think that's fair. The public has seen it. Right. So I, I, I stand by the factual comments that were there. And uh, it was not an attack on Senator Marty. It was not an attack to say that uh, this amendment was attack on police. It's saying that we've, the, the police have been, the police's reputation has been uh, sullied over the last two years. And this is an attempt to rebuild that reputation. Thank you. Senator Benson. Um, Madam Chair, I just want to address a technical point Senator Marty raised. Commissioner of Public Safety will get the money, will have the appropriation. The Post Board is a coordinating and consulting entity, but the Department of Public Safety has a number of social media accounts. Um, they regularly do um, 
marketing and advertising, so they do have the expertise to handle the million dollars, in my opinion. Um, and this goes beyond, and so now I'm going to shift off the technical of um, the Housley bill, but as Senator Pratt said, for two years we've been demeaning peace officers, and so if you're a family member of someone who is in law enforcement, you've heard your loved one called a pig, you've had your your home targeted, some of them have had their homes targeted. Um, if you're in a squad, there are teenagers who feel free to flip you off as you're driving down the road. Um, maybe a sign that says we appreciate you keeps them from leaving. This isn't just about recruiting, we have to retain these officers who are already sworn, who are already serving. We have seen attrition like we have never seen before and maybe it's okay for the state of Minnesota to say, you know what, if you're in law enforcement, we appreciate you, and if you're thinking about going in law enforcement, we're going to help you. Combining Senator Housley and Senator Marty's language accomplishes both of those goals. We appreciate you, we want to retain you, and we'd like more of you to come in. Thank you, Senator Benson. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, the comments have been uh, talked about today are quite interesting and, and uh, um, from Senator Pratt's uh, uh, comments with regards to the last two years, we still have a city council member or maybe members of Minneapolis Police Department who want to ban the police. So I find it kind of, kind of tough, kind of interesting, uh, you know, that, that, that this is still going on and and I'm so, uh, I, I'm so proud of the Senate to, to step up and, and be really the, the big boys, the adults in this conversation because that has to end. That absolutely has to end. If not, uh, criminals are going are gonna to continue uh, to commit the crimes. And I'm, and I'm a little taken back by the, by the uh, I don't know, is it the, the comments about uh, Black officers in the community, Senator Marty, you mentioned that, uh, Senator Franzen, you mentioned uh, um, about people of color not able to read billboards. And I'm, I'm, I'm listening to this and I'm quite confused and I, I, uh, I think it's very insulting, quite frankly, because there's never been, and maybe either one of you two can, can give me an, uh, a department that has turned somebody down because of color. In fact, I asked the, the Commissioner of the Department of Human Rights that uh, during the last budget cycle, how many investigations are you doing about people who have been turned around, be turned away because of color over any job in Minnesota? And she couldn't answer that. I don't think anybody's ever stood in the way of that. So I think that needs to stop, or the whole thing is never going to stop. I would encourage all kinds of people from different colors of community to come into policing. I don't think there's a police chief out there that hasn't, or a sheriff that hasn't. So that needs to, that needs to be, you know, the finger pointing like uh, one party is not open to that. That's, that's, all, that's all just baloney. And if it doesn't stop, we're gonna be, we're gonna be right back down the path here. So this is, this is wonderful, this is a, this is a great thing here. Uh, and and uh, the, the, the thing in Minneapolis and St. Paul has to stop. Uh, if it doesn't, um, nobody's going to want to come here. Nobody's going to want to come here. And, I, and I'd love to be part of turning that around. I really would. So those are my comments. Thank you. Senator Lopez Franzen, and I must admit, Senator, your hand does not show up on your background. So if I miss you, it's not because I. It's, it's a light, um, medium tan hand, but I'll go with the yellow one. That might stick <laughs> out a little bit more. That would help me. Um, I think challenged here. Senator. Um, Madam Chair, and I just want to clarify the record that no one said that people of color cannot read. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Lopez Franzen. Uh, with that, members, before we vote on this, I do want to um, make sure that the author of this bill, where there's an amendment going on, is fine with this A4 amended. 
Madam amendment. Chair, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Um, yes, I am. I am good with this amendment. I do feel it is very timely. Like I said earlier, we're down 900 uh, police officers in the state of Minnesota, it, and as Senator Benson said, attrition's never been higher in this state than it is right now, and it's not going to stop unless we do something. So, I, I uh, uh, approve of the amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Housley. Um, hold on one second, please. Madam so, Chair? Um, we have, there are tails in this amendment um, on the A4 amendment. So we are going to have to make sure, uh, Mr. Bonner. Uh, Madam Chair and members, I think the intention is to make this a one-time appropriation as the other appropriation in the bill uh, would read. So if Senator Benson wants to incorporate this in her oral amendment, um, it would be to um, amend the A4 amendment on page one, line 10, after the period insert, this is a one-time appropriation. Uh, Mr. Bodern, um, my, I'm wondering if, uh, if the bill that was heard in judiciary yesterday, Senator in, uh, Jasinski's, if that was one time. Mr. Nauman. Madam Chair, I'm I apologize, I did not see what occurred in judiciary, but I think that this reflects the base language. Madam Chair, I think I can clarify. The committee has adopted the A2 amendment, which modified the appropriation in the bill that was referred to the committee to make yet a one-time appropriation. Okay, okay, there, explained it, all right. Do one time then. Okay, Senator Benson. Um, oh, excuse me, before you do it, Senator Marty. Um, Madam Chair, I'm not sure where we are with the amendment and whether it's going to happen again, but I did intend this to be permanent ongoing funding. I think the need is out there. I think we should continue it. And so the amendment I offered had it as uh, ongoing. And um, she's welcome to try and amend it off, but that's, that's her business. I would like to know um, what Senator Jasinski's bill was yesterday. In judiciary, does anybody remember? Senator Marty, do you know? Uh, um, Madam Chair, I do not. I just think it's a thing that we should be doing ongoing. I think it's a good outreach to recruit more police officers, which is something the folks seem to say they want to do, and I'd like to have it ongoing. So my, my request is to have it this way. Um, obviously, the committee can do what it chooses. Mr. Nauman, can you explain what, oh, Okay, um, Mr. Nelman or, or Mr. Backus. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, the Judiciary Bill, Senate File 2847, Pathways to Policing, doesn't specify, but it's one million in, in the current fiscal year. So my understanding is it's intended to be ongoing. Thank you. Thank you, that's very helpful, Mr. Backus. Senator Johnson. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. If, has a roll call been requested? No. I request roll call. Roll call has been requested. Roll call granted. S um, Senator Marty, I would, oh, let's turn to Mr. Nauman and figure out the tails on this, please, Mr. Nauman. Madam Chair. Um, Senator Kiffmeyer. Madam Chair, it seems the uh, most efficient way to do this at this time is to make it one time. Judiciary also has this and is going to do it. They can deal with whether there's going to be tails or not tails. But I think for this finance committee with this action here today, I think one time is uh, works much better. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kiffmer. Senator, or uh, Mr. Nauman, can you please explain what the tails are on it? So, Madam Chair and members, um, the under budget rules, whatever the appropriation is in fiscal 23 would be pushed into 24, 25 and ongoing beyond that. We track 24 and 25 as our tails in this biennium. So whatever that appropriation that you land on in 23 is, whether it's a million dollars or two million dollars, if there is not language that says this is a one-time appropriation by custom and practice, we would track a tail on it. And that would set a base for the future. Okay. And that was not done yesterday, if it's ongoing. 
just out of curiosity, uh, I would like to uh, know at some point yeah. how much are the tails. <laughs> Uh, but, well, Madam Chair, I, I was trying to finesse that a little bit because I, I think it's still an open question whether Senator Marty's two million dollars, um, without one time, without the language that says it's one time, would be the the order of the committee based on all the motions in front of you. If that were the case, then the tail would be four million. If if Senator if the appropriation is reduced to a million, and there is no. Uh, one-time language, then the tail would be two million, a million a year. Obviously, if the one-time appropriation language is added, then the be, tail would be zero. Thank you, Senator Marty, or, or Mr. Nauman. Gosh. Okay, Senator Benson, would you like to reinstate your motion? Um, Madam Chair, I'm going to ask Mr. Bodern <laughs> to walk us through where we're at <laughs> and if he could please address the title language amendment uh, following on page one, line 11 and following. Thank you. So Madam Chair and members, um, just repeating the amendment that uh, Senator Benson offered, it would be um, on page one of the A4 amendment, delete line two, and that would have the effect of simply adding uh, the section one that you see stated in, it, in the A4 amendment. Um, so page one after section one, insert um, this new section, and then on page one, line four of the amendment, delete two million and insert one million. Um, the open question I think right now, Senator Benson, would be whether you want to incorporate um, or add to your oral amendment on page one, line 10 of the amendment after commissioner insert, this is a one-time appropriation. Um, Mr. Bodern, I will follow the advice of Senator Kiffmeyer. We'll make this one time and let judiciary set the budget. Okay. And then um, as far as the title instruction goes, uh, Madam Chair and Senator Benson, I think what I'd recommend at this point in the interest of efficiency is to instruct staff to amend the title accordingly. That's sufficient. We, we, Almost always work that way. Sometimes it's nice to have a title instruction, but in this instance, the staff can amend the title accordingly. Then I would incorporate a title instruction and the one-time appropriation okay. language. Okay. And thank you, Senator Kiffmer. I do agree with that conclusion too. Any questions to this amendment? Yeah. Yeah. Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam Chair. So just for clarity, does this, the way that um, council has just described it, does this make the one million dollars for the promoting peace officers section ongoing but the one million dollars for the halfway that. senator Kent, one time uh, mr bottom so um madam chair and senator kent um just to clarify if the senator benson amendment is adopted i'll state it this way i think it's the most simple way to state it if that amendment is adopted then each of these appropriations would be a one-time appropriation Okay, very good. Any further questions? Senator Housley, you good? Uh, Madam Chair, sounds good. Okay, Senator Marty. Madam Chair, again, I'll speak against the amendment. I think what we have here, I had proposed um, putting in money for a program that recruits more police officers, especially those who've been underrepresented in the past. It's a good thing to be doing. The two million is not too much money for it. And the idea that we're gonna do that instead of putting a marketing campaign, which I think is ill-timed and not a helpful and not gonna recruit more people, I think that's a bad idea. So I strongly urge members to reject the amendment to the amendment. Thank you, Senator Marty. Okay, no further questions. A roll call has been requested. Roll call granted. Clerk will take the roll. Chair votes aye. Chair Rosen. Chair Rosen, vote aye. Vice Chair Ingebrigtsen. Aye. Senator Marty. No. Senator Benson. Aye. Senator Champion. Senator Johnson. Aye. Senator Kent. No. Senator Kiffmeyer. Aye. Senator Lopez-Franzen. 
No. Senator Pratt. Aye. Senator Champion. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I said no. There being six ayes and four noes, the amendment is adopted. Senator, oh yes, okay, yes. And now we have the A4 amendment before us. Thank you, Dallas. Um, okay, all those understand what just happened? Okay, all those in favor of the A4 amendment as amended? Video on, audio on. Please say aye. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those in favor, uh, all those opposed, no? The motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. Uh, Your Honor, I'll take it. I'll take it. No. <laughs> Your brown oh, nose. Okay. <laughs> Chair, Senator I have Champion. An amendment. I have the A5 amendment, uh, uh, Madam Chair. Senator Champion, we will uh, post that. And if you could just give us a moment here. That is a perfect way to describe you, the honorable one. <laughs> I have to go over it again. We'll, we'll talk later. <laughs> we, oh, we'll talk later. <clears throat> Members, I do believe um, uh, Members, we are in recess.
recess. Um, with that, the amendment is posted. And Mr. Bonner, could you please explain the amendment? There is some confusion, Senator Champion, on this right now. So Madam Chair and members, uh, you have the A5 amendment before you, and um, I apologize for this staff. We're working fairly quickly, and there are layers of amendments here. I think one issue that needs to be clarified um, is that the amendment contains the instruction to delete uh, section one. And at this point, that would be the original appropriation that was contained in Senate file 2848, which was the, the grant, uh, well, the appropriation to the Commissioner of Public Safety for the grant to implement a marketing and advertising campaign. Um, I think the question then is for Senator Champion what his wishes would be, whether he intends this in effect as, um, you know, whether he would retain the instruction to delete section one, or is it intended as a delete everything, um, how, what, what approach he would prefer? Senator Champion. Uh, Madam Chair, my uh, intentions were just to add on this amendment to what you have now. It was never to get rid of any other of the, the proposals that have been put forward. I just think that this proposal um, adds a layer of uniqueness and would really help the entire uh, yeah. Thank you, Senator Champion. Mr. Bonner. So then, Madam Chair and members, um, if Senator Champion is willing to incorporate a small change in his amendment, we can clarify that on page one, line two of the amendment. Um, remove the phrase, delete the phrase that says delete section one and insert and add um, after section one, insert. That'll be sufficient for now um, to make it clear and staff can renumber sections with the, in the process of uh, assembling the committee report. Senator That's Champion. my motion. That's my motion, uh, Madam Chair. Senator Champion then has moved the A5 amendment. Uh, Mr. Bonham, what, what, what change was that? Okay. Uh, so, Madam Chair and members, on page one, line two of the A5 amendment, uh, the instruction should read on page one at, uh, in, after section one, insert. Um, that'll work for now. Um, it's sufficiently clear for us to okay. in incorporate it. Um, and then, yes, it's, um, this is, it does raise the same issue that has been confronted with the previous two appropriations. Um, as we were given the instructions, it's a, it's a $1 million grant in fiscal year 23, as Mr. Nelman noted. Um, the custom and practice is to treat that as a continuing appropriation. So that's another question. Um, for the author of the amendment, whether it is intended to be continuing or one time. Um, Madam Chair. Senator Champion. Um, it's intended to be a one time right now, so that's consistent with the other provisions. Okay, Mr. So, Bonner. Madam Chair and members, um, again, apologies for assembling this on the fly, but uh, on page one, line seven of the amendment, after the period, um, you would need to add additional language that specifies this is a one time appropriation. And Senator Champion can incorporate that in his amendment. Okay, Senator Champion. That's my desire. Thank you. That's my motion. <laughs> That's funny. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Madam Chair, if I could, uh, Senator Champion, can you tell me what Stair Step Foundation is, and how many uh, me how many members there are of this foundation, and how long has it been going on? And just give a little overview of it. I have not heard of it. Senator uh, the Stair Step, thank you. The Stair Step Foundation has been around since 1991, and it's a well-known foundation. Uh, in fact, they have done some collaborations with the state through other uh, initiatives. Uh, so uh, it's a small foundation because the whole idea is that they work with a number of community organizations, government, whatever, on a, their, on a number of different initiatives. They have, have also had uh, curriculum stuff, mental health stuff, so just a number of different things. And their whole mission is to rebuild the spirit of community in community. So that's stair stuff. But the piece that uh, they um, have been working with is 21 Days of Peace. You've probably heard uh, about 21 Days of Peace on the news because it's a highly um, supported faith-based initiative with churches from across the, the state of Minnesota, especially in Minneapolis and St. Paul, have all come out in order to make sure that they are working with law enforcement um, by identifying hot spots, and then they've had volunteers and different people out there in order to make sure that they keep crime down, talk to folks who are 
in, in those places. And while working with law enforcement, they move from, from place to place, right? So it's a well-known and respected, as I mentioned, faith-based initiative that works with community and law enforcement to prevent and intervene in spaces that are concerned hotspots for crime. But also they build relationships in the community that will lead to a better positive outcome for families and children. The whole idea is that we want all of our families and children and others to be safe. Uh, this initiative, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Senator Ingebrigtsen is supported by law enforcement. In fact, they've come and, and, and testified in, in support of this initiative, uh, like former uh, Chief uh, Madera uh, Arredondo, also Chief Axel in St. Paul. And in fact, Senator Gazelka has met with this group and supports this group as well. Uh, um, what I also believe is important for us to note is that this initiative is a great way to demonstrate or market potential careers in law enforcement because they work with law enforcement. They're out there. They're not in place of law enforcement. They work together. Uh, and they work hard now because they're doing it now. And, and this investment will help deal with the immediate needs for public safety and developing, as I mentioned, interest in law enforcement as a, as a, as a potential career option. So this initiative sort of unites the marketing notion that I heard Senator Housley talking about and the pathways that I've heard Senator Marty talking about because it unites both of those marketing and law enforcement uh, notions and increases direct marketing to co communities of color that will increase the number of law enforcement. So that is something that we want something that is important and it also deals with immediacy that I think I heard Senator uh, Kent talking about uh, and it's a well-established, familiar and, and, and worthwhile notion so it, it fits uh, appropriately here. So that is why I'm asking for this support today. Thank you, Senator Champion. Senator Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair and, and uh, Senator Champion, thank you for bringing this forward. I think it'll bring a lot of attention just by bringing it forward here today. Uh, it sounds like a great group, great mission. However, one of the things I think that you're lacking within this bill is some accountability for what that money is being used for. I don't think uh, this is exactly prime time bill right now. We need some reporting like we've, we've asked for in the other bills today and our, in the programs and whatnot that, that we're funding. We've seen recently a rather large uh, fiasco within the state of Minnesota where Money went to a particular organization, and and uh, that uh, ended up being a, a pretty fraudulent uh, deal. I'm not saying that that's what's happening here, but uh, for the sake of Minnesota taxpayers, I think it's really important to have that uh, accountability and a vetting process as well. Typically, these groups go through a grant-making process where they apply and they they go through a, a strong vetting process, and and here it's just a appropriation straight to an organization that may or may not be doing uh, wonderful work in the community, but we just don't have any sort of a, accountability measures behind this, so I, I'm very concerned about that. I think this bill needs to be uh, taken back and, and reassessed a little bit to put some of those guidelines in. So thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Madam Chair, may I address uh, yeah. Senator Johnson's Sen concern? Senator Champion. Uh, uh, Senator Johnson, as we did this morning, we uh, you introduced a an amendment that brought in reporting uh, uh, as a part of that bill. We could certainly use the same reporting here, uh, uh, so there's no problem with mm -hmm. that. Uh, secondly, uh, this is not unusual for us to do a direct appropriation from the legislature because this happens over and over again. I can tell you of a number of, of direct appropriations that we've done in every single area, including jobs, including uh, uh, school, in, including a number of different, uh, different places. So that's not unusual. So I'm sorry that you are not aware of that, but you can ask any of your colleagues that that is not unusual. The last thing that I'll say, I think you should be very careful, Senator Johnson, I, and although I know that you um, sort of retracted your, your words a little bit, um, I, I, I don't think it's fair that if there's been something that's happened in some other area that now you say you need to uh, be concerned about fraud in this area with these individuals just because they're people of color because the other notion that you mentioned earlier had that uh, 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 a concern around fraud that that was 
some other group that I don't know anything about, but that's not here, and, and this group has a track record. Uh, in fact, you can even ask Senator Gazalka, and you can ask a number of other people who uh, know this uh, group as well. So I just want us to be careful when we think about that. But let's think positively here. It is uh, every direct appropriation doesn't just go to the, the organization. It goes through a state agency who has to have certain accountabilities, and there's a contract that's entered into in order to make sure that they are meeting every um, aspect of the uh, of, of what they're supposed to do. So uh, let's just be careful that we're not, you know, making or, or suggesting things that I don't think you intended, but it could be interpreted the, the wrong way, uh, Senator Johnson. Senator Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I don't, I don't think I um, insinuated or even made reference to race. I think that was you, uh, Senator Champion. Looking at their Facebook, they've got, uh, it's, it's white, it's black, it's everybody in the community. I don't think it's a matter of race at all. So I would appreciate if uh, you wouldn't uh, bring that issue into the subject. What, what we're looking at is making sure that we have the guidelines alongside these organizations to ensure that we don't have issues. So that's all I was saying. And well, that, that's all I wanted to stop. With. Well, I want to make sure that uh, uh, you're really clear that uh, what I was referring to is when you said just recently there was an organization that is dealing with fraud. That's what you said. And the organization that I think that you said was dealing with fraud, which you implied, was a, another organization of color. I just want to make sure that we're clear. I wasn't saying, saying anything other than I'm bringing forth what, what I believe is a very credible uh, proposal. And uh, thank you, Senator Johnson, for your words. Thank you, Senator Champion. Uh, members, we do have one more amendment that we do need to address. Um, I, and we have two more comments, but uh, we need to take a vote on this soon. Senator Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Whenever I see the name of an organization getting direct funds, um, I go to GuideStar and look at their 990. So the most recent 990 that I could find for stair step was from 2018, and they might just GuideStar might not have loaded their most recent 990s, but this would be about triple what their contribution and grants were for the most recent year that the public that there's publication available. So they might be doing meritorious work, but if we're going to be doing um, grants for specific purposes, I think a competitive grant and some due diligence. Uh, and, and Senator Champion, you're right, we've done direct appropriations to organizations in the past, but I've tried my very best to have everything be competitive, not directly appropriated, and, or, and not so specific that there would be only one organization eligible. They might be doing great work, but I think it's best practice if we set a mission instead of a specific organization, and I would recommend a no on this amendment. Senator Kipmeyer. Oh. Uh, Senator Champion, I'll let you um, address both of them. Senator Kiffmeyer. Madam Chair, Senator Benson has covered it. I know we're short of time, so we can just go ahead and vote. Okay. Senator Champion. And lastly, uh, 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 Madam Chair, to Senator Benson. Uh, Senator Benson, you said a particular mission. This, this is a specific mission. <laughs> we have talked uh, feverishly about marketing for police officers, making sure that people understand the importance of this great work that law enforcement does, and that there's, uh, and, and you came up with the amendment to sort of bridge the gap and, uh, uh, that, that Senator Marty had put forward around making sure that there's direct, uh, direct marketing to communities of color in order to increase those numbers in police departments. And this does exactly that mission on both sides of the equation. So uh, um, again, uh, 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 this is worthwhile. It's necessary, and we've we've done the we've done direct appropriations, and I think it would be appropriate here. Uh, so that is what I'll say, and I would um, ask for a roll call. Thank you, Senator Champion. A roll call has been requested. A roll call would be granted. Um, the the only thing I would like to say, Senator Champion, is. Um, you've made a compelling argument for the Steer Step Foundation. I too have been in Senator Benson's committee way too long and steer clear of these direct appropriations. But I think there's another way to get around this if you're willing to continue to work on, on some competitive grant process, some, instead of creating winners and losers with you know, singling out one group in this, in this amendment. So um, do not be disheartened. I think we need to work together on, on this process. But um, 
with that, a roll call will be, will be taken. The clerk will take the roll. Chair votes it. Chair votes no. Vice Chair Ingebrigtsen? No. Senator Marty? Aye. Senator Benson? No. Senator Champion? Yes. Aye. Senator Johnson? No. Senator Kent? Aye. Senator Kickmeyer? No. Senator Lopez Brandon? I'm having a really hard time listening, so I don't know if they called my name, but uh, Lopez Franson votes aye. I don't think they're using the mic. Senator Pratt? No. There being four yes and six no's, the motion does not prevail. Okay, members, I think there was another amendment uh, prepared. Does anybody else have one? No. Okay. No. Okay. All right. Well, we, ha we have before us an amended version of Senate File 2848. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Or no, excuse me. Um, Senator Housley, we'll go to you first. I'm so I apologize for your closing comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, again, thank you for hearing this uh, bill. I want to thank my co-authors, Senator Limmer, Duckworth, Coleman, and Pratt. Uh, being a police officer is a public service that should be praised and valued. They're the people that we call when we are in need. They're the people that we call to when we are in danger. Uh, it's my hope that we can elevate this profession and recognize all law enforcement uh, and spread the word of the rewarding and honorable nature of this career path with the passing of this bill. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Housley. Senator Kim. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I'll be really brief. Um, I just want to say we've had a lot of discussion and we've heard in response to some of our amendments that you know there's uncertainties and we can't be sure and there's not clarity and um, we're just throwing money to whatever purpose and, and it's not, we're not being accountable enough. And I go back to my original point. Um, as you know, we all agree that we can talk about effective recruitment of law enforcement officers, but um, the way this first part of this um, bill is structured in terms of just giving a million dollars for some sort of PR campaign, to me does not provide near enough guidelines and guardrails uh, for the effort that we're talking about, and um, I think this is uh, not an effective use of funds. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kent. Senator DeMarty. Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, I'm glad we put on at least part of my amendment, half of it, and not ongoing, so I guess a fraction of it. But we put on some good efforts to recruit people of color into law enforcement. Um, I'm not one who's out there bashing police officers. I recognize the importance of anybody who's serving the public in any fashion, and people put their lives on the line, as many people do. I recognize all that, but I think it's highly insensitive timing a week after Amir Locke was killed, innocent man killed by a police raid that I don't think should have happened in the way it did. I'm not trying to second guess at all. I'm just trying to say the insensitivity to this when people are hurting, I just think it's terrible and I, I have to pose the bill based on that alone. Thank you, Senator Marty. Any further comments, questions? Okay, Senator Ingebrigtsen. Madam Chair, I'd move Senate file 2848 as amended and ask for a roll call, please. Roll call has been requested. A roll call will be granted. The clerk will take the roll. On that motion. Chair Rosen. Chair votes aye. Chair Ingebrit or Vice Chair Ingebrigtsen. Aye. Senator Marty. No. Senator Benson? Aye. Senator Champion? No. Senator Johnson? Aye. Senator Kent? No. Senator Kiffmeyer? Aye. Senator Lopez Franzen? No. Senator Pratt? Aye. There being six ayes and four noes, the motion prevails and the bill is on to the floor.
So, members, that took a little bit longer than I thought we were going to have. Thank you, Senator Housley, very Thank much. <laughs> we, are, we were going to have a presentation from um, MMB on our debt service, our, debt, our state debt, and on our federal funds that were coming in. So we will have them in next week. We do have a couple bills for next week, I believe. Um, Tuesday. Possibly Tuesday we'll be meeting. Um, any, any comments, questions on that? But yeah, we'd like to get a, a good, they have a, a, MMB has a great presentation on our debt service and, and the, uh, the federal funds. So we'd really like to spend time with that. Senator Marty. Um, Madam Chair, do you have a sense of what bills are coming up next week? You said a couple of them, do you expect? I believe a Senator Abler's bill, a long-term care bill, I believe is coming. Anything else? No, that, that's all I know at this point. Okay. So, and yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you don't know which days yet? Tuesday, let's plan on Tuesday. Um, well, at least for sure for, for MMB. And Tuesday, Wednesday, let's say that. Thank you. That sounds good. Okay. With that, no further questions. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>